I left and had an absolute breakdown in the car park, which resulted in my husband ringing my mum and going, I don't know what to do anymore. Hi, my name is Jess Jones, also known as the Fat Funny One Online on Instagram, and I'm going to be talking about mental health with It's Gone Viral. When was the first time that you were aware of mental health? The first time I guess I was aware of mental health was in 2012 um, when I was pregnant with my first daughter and I was diagnosed with something called tocophobia. Um, don't know how to spell it, but um, and it's the irrational fear of childbirth and it was the first diagnosis that I received and the first, I guess, official experience of this is something that you have and it's got a title and a label um, and that was my first experience. Talk to me a little bit about that. What was going on for you at that time? As pregnant, I realised quite quickly that, that babies have to come out <laughs> um, and I had this really overwhelming sense of fear. And not just a fear of the unknown or, you know, things that are quite natural, but it was a real deep, irrational fear that this was going to end horribly um, for myself and my baby. And I just couldn't let it go and I wouldn't sleep. Um, I struggled to concentrate. Anything baby related around birth, I just I had panic attacks. It was awful and just got worse and worse and really stole some of the joy of what was happening and the whole miracle that is having a baby. And I felt like no one was listening to me. People just kept saying, well, you're young, it's the fear of the unknown, it's totally normal to be worried or, you know, not understand what's happening. But I knew it was, it was a lot deeper and somewhat darker than, than I guess people had assumed. And how long did that go on for before you received the diagnosis? So I didn't actually receive a diagnosis until about a month before my due date. So uh, considering you're pregnant for, for nearly nine months, 40 weeks, it was almost the whole length of my pregnancy. It all came to a head when I went for a midwife appointment at the hospital and asked what my options were around birth and, and tried to feel reassured and was, was told I was being dramatic and you know, this, this is what happens and I left and had an absolute breakdown in the car park um, which resulted in my husband ringing my mum and going, I don't know what to do anymore, I can't, I, I can't help, she's not listening, what do I do? And march me back into the hospital and just said, can someone help my wife, someone, someone needs to listen to her. And I was taken in a room and finally someone said, okay, we're going we're gonna to escalate this because this, is, this isn't safe. The, the way you're feeling and, and how you are isn't okay for you or your baby. Okay, and, and you mentioned your husband there. How did this impact him and his mental health? It wasn't something we talked about for a long time. His whole thing and all he ever kept saying to doctors and midwives was, I just want my wife to be okay. To some degree, it was quite traumatic for both of us because he didn't get to experience this really exciting, moment in time and he also carried the burden of worrying of providing and doing all these things that he thought he was supposed to do and be ready for. Before you got your diagnosis what was one of the some of the triggers that happened for you with regards to, to what how you were feeling? I got offered a, a walk around the birthing suite at the hospital. It, it didn't sound like the most pleasant place to be. Um, no one sounded like they were having fun and I found that Ho just horrendous and it wasn't until much later and, and having other children I realised it's just part of it and, and all these other beautiful things that happened but that was probably one of the worst experiences for me. How confusing was it for you having not had the diagnosis but yet you've got all of this stuff going on internally? What was going on for you at that time? Obviously knowing what you know now you know, with, with the diagnosis that you've had. I'm not going to be a good mum. If I was a good mum, then this would be natural to me. Everything should be natural because we're made to do this. And that's what I had totally convinced myself is that I'm going to be an awful mum because if I was a good mum, I'd be really excited and this would be totally fine and I would be loving it and I'd be excited about it. And, and I didn't feel any of those feelings. Let's go back to when you were diagnosed. What happened next? When I officially got diagnosed, I saw a consultant who uh, specialised in maternal mental health, uh, which was incredible. Um, I didn't even know that was a thing. And I was booked in to have a caesarean section, which then came with this whole nuance of I was taking the easy way out. And so it came with a whole other list and barrage of it's the easy way out, it's not really birth, it's not, you know, unless you do it naturally, that's not the way it's supposed to be. So I came with this whole other drama. Because this condition is linked to the fear of childbirth, obviously once 
your baby was born, did it stop? Yeah, to some degree. The, the whole, my whole thing was around the birth, the physical birth, and, it, and now we were both okay, it, it wasn't something that I thought about because I didn't have to do it again. I didn't have to, to birth her, so the, the worry of, of birth was, was gone. To, to some degree and it feels really strange saying that because it was so big and was so consuming for it to just not be present anymore was really really strange with what you do on social and your podcast how does that help you because obviously it's great you're sharing your message and helping other people but how do you look after your own mental health i have gone to therapy for about three years every sunday and i don't know what i'd do if i didn't go it's my balancing tool. It's the place I get to be open and honest and raw and know that someone is not judging me or you know thinking that I'm failing but is going to support me in getting the right frame of mind to move forward from them because one of the things I can do is get really stuck in that negative space or in that dark place of feeling like there's no way out and when my mental health isn't great I feel very trapped and very lonely and so every Sunday it's my opportunity to open that door let someone in and, and be able to talk freely for a long time I put it off because I I didn't I don't know I just felt like therapy is, is it a thing it felt I this idea I had of therapy was very movie based I clearly watched too many films but it was very movie based and it was for either really rich people who you know I, I don't know I had this picture I'd go in after work being in London and I'd lie down on a chair and someone was saying how do you feel about that and I'd lie down on their chaise lounge looking up at their posh ceiling and be like well and I'd cry about it and then go out with my friends margaritas like I had this really weird idea about it but actually it's just my safe space and I would always put everyone else before me, but didn't realise that actually I can't be who I want to be for anyone else unless I look after my own mental health. So I go to therapy still, and I talk quite openly about that because I don't think there's any shame. I don't hide the fact that I go. I think it's quite important to share that so people understand that it's an option for them and that it's quite a normal thing to do. And the other thing I do is I try really hard to put myself first, which seems like a very selfish thing to say as a mother particularly, but I can't be the mother that I want to be if I'm not okay. Apart from going to therapy, I try and regularly take social media breaks. I try really hard. I was gonna say to come off my phone at night, but I'm definitely still scrolling TikTok at like midnight, but it's fine. Um, but I journal a lot. Um, and something that seems so simple, but remembering to breathe, just to take a minute and to take a breath. Um, when I feel overwhelmed, when I feel scared, just to have those moments of, of peace where I just take a minute realign and step forward and share. I share as much as I can because there's this sense of relief when the weight is off your shoulders and someone else says, no, I totally understand what you're saying. I totally get it. I feel the same. So those are my go-tos, but I think my looking after my mental health is a priority because I just can't be the mother, the wife, the friend, the sister, the employee. I can't be any of those things at the standard level I want to be if I don't look after my mental health first. So you regularly have your therapy, which is fantastic. Lockdown has been challenging for a lot of people. How did you find that period of time? I think I was lost in my newborn baby bubble. The timing of that worked quite well for me personally because I had this focus, so I kind of forgot the outside world a little bit. The hardest part for me is not being around my people, so my mum and my family members and my friends, because every time I've had a baby, my mum's come over and looked after us and, you know, been there, and I didn't have any of that. I tried to balance that out with, well, I don't have to tidy up or do anything because I've got no guests, so this is great. But I made sure that we got out a little bit. We went for walks as a family. What advice would you give to somebody if they're listening to you talk about how you were feeling in your first pregnancy, and they may or may not be pregnant themselves? Talk about it. There's nothing that you're feeling that you can't tell someone and get the right support for. Be honest, because it, it's not something to be ashamed of, but when you do get the right support, you could go on to, to have children or you know change your life for, for the better. I can't imagine my life now without my children. And there's support out there for someone to be able to take that next step. And, and to get the family if that's what they want and, and, and have exactly what they want. 
If you've been affected by anything that you've heard in this series, there are people that you can talk to. See the top comment for the relevant organisations that you can reach out to. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Stone Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone Viral.